Here now, Cloud9, Nihilum, Inferno, same map. And we already saw Cloud9 in one match tonight. They're gonna knife for sides. Yeah, sorry, I was, uh, I was just grabbing the IP. Oh, well, I apologize. That said, I guess I, I won't do it. It's too late. It's too late. I can't start halfway through. But the knife's underway, and Cloud9 looks like they're in a desperate situation. In fact, they are. Valens will close it off, so Nihilum will get the start on their Inferno side. Now, interesting facts about Nihilum. 70% CT side win rate when they're against move-up teams. 5-0 and against move-up teams. 2-2 two and two against returning teams to the league. And much less CT sided when that's the case. So this is going to be a test for them because if they're only knocking off the lower teams, that's great. And it looks good at this point in time, but you have to consider the schedule. Some of the other top teams right now haven't played all those teams. So it'll even itself out and balance itself out. So Nylum definitely has to start beating these top teams on a more consistent basis. Yeah, and, and none, no win over that would be more sweeter than this one. Hiko and uh, Hiko and Cephas going up against Cloud9. Cephas is immediately goosh and pushed back into the bomb site. This gives Cloud9 so much control of brackets, and they're going to keep the train rolling. And the train rolls right into A. They don't know it, though. But Semphis has been waiting this whole time inside Graveyard. He pops out. Sean Garris, no idea he's there, and he takes down his former teammate. Shroud, though, does get back into him. Valence finds Freakazoid and Shroud. He'll cancer that one out as well. And that means it's all left to Skadoodle. And Shroud with Bomb down now against Automatic Sanks and another former teammate, Hiko. A bit of a grudge match tonight as Automatic will find Shroud. That'll bring it down to just Skadoodle. And inside the site, he's got nowhere to hide. Does manage to find Hiko to at least, I guess, uh, get the better of his old teammate and get the better of that bragging right so far. But it doesn't matter because Nihilum will pick up the pistol round. And CT side, we said it. This is the side that... In many matches has carried them over, but not against teams that are returning to the top division. And with this start, that's a, that's a contribution toward that. What a round by, by Valens and, and Sephis. I mean, Sephis gets gooshed immediately down to about 15 HP and just falls back and hides in graveyard stairs. They don't, they don't find him. He's able to even just get one kill that was massive in that position. And this is that same buy we saw to Cloud9 on Overpass. Drop an AK-47, drop a Galil for teammates, Tech 9's behind it. It didn't work, but it kept the economic pressure on it. And look at how aggressive Nihilum is being. They don't want to give any opportunity for Cloud9 to find any kind of map control. And it's going to be Famas. MP9 for Valens. We do have the AK for nothing. Really aggressive Cloud9 buy. Semphis just peeking out at top mid right now. No one else really getting aggressive. Cloud9, look how passive they're being. Shroud's all the way back on the balcony. Two players on the far side, the T side well, of apartments. And Skadoodle and Freakazoid not even up the mid stairs right now. Here's why. Being a second round, I mean, they know with this purchase that, that Nihilum, no matter what they have, they're not going to have a lot of smokes, not going to have a lot of flashbangs. And you look at, look at the utility Nihilum has left. They have zero smokes with 45 seconds left in the round. Only three flashbangs to work with, so they're going to give these AKs and this Galil, or the AK and the Galil, an opportunity to get an opening pick for them. And the smoke from Skadoodle is going to go over. That'll cover off toward the pit. They've already got one out deployed on arch side. That's top mid arch side though, so it still leaves Cubby in a little bit of room to shuffle. But now the second one comes out front library. These are good smokes from Cloud9, but they're better shots from Nihilum. Sanks find Shroud, Semphis, Valens, they all get a kill involved. But Sean Gears eventually does get one back. It doesn't matter though. He's going to be the only one left now as Semphis will contribute with his second. And Sean down to 36 HP can do not much at all. They recover the bomb down to 1 HP, does get at least a kill, but it's 2 0 Nihilum, and that very aggressive buy hardly does anything for them. Yeah, the plant is actually the plant's actually great. Uh, you know, the, the same thing happened second round and over and overpass. Uh, they didn't win the round, but they got the plant, so it kind of neutralized that, equalizes everything. They'll be able to buy next round. Uh, but unfortunately, I mean, they just didn't do as much economical damage, and they even gave a free AK-47 over to Semphis, so Nihilum handles that very, very well. Now they've got them, some utility built up behind this. Sean Gare's already up to the top of alt mid. He'll peek out, spot sank down at bench. Doesn't have awareness though that Valens was actually in a good spot to pop up behind him and pinch them from apartments, but instead he runs all the way back to the balcony at pit. So Sanks and Sempus will hold off the top of middle. Hiko's gonna rotate over early from B. That leaves Automatic alone, but he's being slow. He's just getting to Speedway, so he's still in a good swing position. He'll wait for the call and Automatic wins the exchange against Freakazoid. Problem is, 
He doesn't know he's alone, so he goes already back, but it might work out because Cloud9's also heading in that direction despite losing that exchange. And it's just the P250s, keep in mind, but they can be lethal when they come in hordes. And Hiko just needs to hold this crossfire. Automatic's completely blinded, so it's all gonna be Hiko. Now he can come back out and help him, as Hiko's already found three, it won't even matter. As he takes down all of his old teammates, and Automatic does get the one last player, so... Now we'll see, well, will we see? That's the question due to these force. We will see the full first full gun round for Cloud9. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see what they do, especially with an op not being in Skadoodle's hands, where are they going to find an opening? This is a map that Sean likes to call with with more execution-based strategies than on some other maps. But the defense for Dialum looks really solid, and they're going to have, I mean, it's going to be tough for them to crack it. They've been a very, very good ct side of team. And just spread out across the map at the moment is Cloud9, just watching for pushes, just trying to gain any kind of, uh, any kind of intel. Cephas and Valence pushed up into these halls. Valence with an MP9 actually in the bedroom. So Nylum's got some aggressive positioning on this defense. Super aggressive indeed, but they've still got to deal with the fact that Freakazoid... Doing his role, coming in as the entry man, is trying to take down Automatic. Only gets him down to 74, goes down to 57 himself, so... Slight advantage right now. Look at Valens, though. He's completely in position to catch Shroud off, and the MP9 does it. Extra $600. Semphis slides out. He finds Skadoodle as well. It's all working in favor of Nihilum. Yeah, and uh, questionable. I mean, Shroud alone in Hall, Skadoodle alone just wandering up mid. Those are two easy pickoffs for Nihilum. Cloud9 can't get that disorganized in the mid rounds. Sean now has to be the one to go for the entry. That's Freak. He just now joins them again from B, so Sean's still looking for that spot, that angle on Arch side. Look at this smoked off late. Look at Valen's position, though, with this MP9. He's gotten behind them at mid. He's used apartments perfectly. Come back out of that bedroom, and now he could be on the flank, but there might not be anyone left to flank. As Semphis, he'll hold on perfectly. And that's a good round from him. Picks up three kills, and now it's the first gun, as well as those three early rounds to go to Nihilum. This is a perfect start so far for them. Yeah, it is. And you mentioned before this cast that Semphis has been an absolute beast with Nihilum so far this season. On top of that, Sanks and Automatic playing very, very well. So this is a Nihilum team that's looking super strong early on in their lifetime. And Cloud9, I mean, not even really an opening in that match. No bomb plan as well. They're going to be forced onto an eco round. Just Tech 9s and P250s for them. And not even any smokes. Just two flashbangs to work with. So this should be a pretty aggressive, uh, pretty aggressive strategy with only two pop flashes to go with. We'll see if it works off as Skadoodle back, like back and limited only to the P250, excuse me, tries to get up a little bit further toward the bench, try and work with Sean Gare. Shroud's found his way inside the apartments, but he's a little bit timid to push out anywhere else. I'll wait for his teammates to group around him. As Sanks will slide out. That's another player that's going to have to be strong along with Sampis, but Automatic gets overwhelmed. Freakazoid finds him. Now they also pick up the M4 because there's no one in position to go for the immediate trade. This pulls back Sampis on the rotation. Hiko gets very passive inside the new box area. And Cloud9 might have just exploited it a little bit, but the problem is Sampis has got there quite quickly. So they're going to rely on Freakazoid again to try and go for the entry. Sean Gears follows in his footsteps and follows him into the grave as Sampis collects both. And the M4 actually stays up. It's nothing that has it, but he's not in position to come in behind them and try and at least trade that out and try and get a bomb plant. They still would have had to contend with Hiko. The problem is that Skadoodle and Shroud rotated all the way back over to A in the, in the meantime. Yeah, and only 25 seconds left in this round. They're pretty much dedicated to this A hit. A Molotov is going to slow him down just a little bit longer, along with a couple flashbangs. But Cloud9, no urgency. They're just now passing rap. They're going to rush up the arch side. Sanks is going to respond to it. He grabs both of them. Nice shot onto Shroud. Nice secondary kill. It's all on nothing with the M4. He does have the bomb, but he's got to find Valens and Sanks first. And five, four. Never mind, he's down anyway. Good thing he went down before the round ended. He, this will allow him to get the money bonus. It definitely does not work out. Semphis was completely aware as well that that time was the issue, so he was quick on the rotation. There was no way in for them there. And again, Cloud9, you said it. They look a little confused in the mid-round. That was an eco, admittedly, but they just don't execute. They well, don't really set up for much. Yeah, and Semphis sprays two of them down through the smoke. I mean, that's just kind of a... That's crushing. I'm more interested in what Skadoodle is going to be doing with this AWP on the terror side. I talked about it last match. Very difficult to get going as a sniper on this map. Valence falls all the way back. He's going to go the long way because they go for this three stack at B. Hiko has to come over late. So they're actually going to leave Automatic and Sanks there. This means that 
It's a bit of a change of pace, and with Valen's going passive, it does give up Arch, but this allows them by doubling up to get a little bit more aggressive to contest the hallways and balcony. They've still given up a bit of map control, but Sean hasn't really taken it, peculiar enough. He's just sat back on the stairwell and not even pushed through the halls at all, so Shroud and Skadoodle are standing at the top of mid, and he's not even at the boiler doorway to help flash them out. Yeah, and automatic through gets, the smoke, though. Yep, through the smoke, he gets punished a little bit, but Skadoodle and Shroud to control a bracket so very aggressively, this is giving Skadoodle a lot of time to work up truck side with the AWP, just clearing his angle, seeing what he can find, and it's not going to be anything. 45 seconds still left on the clock, and Cloud9 hasn't made any kind of a commitment and this is putting Hiko into a tough spot where he's got to decide where he wants to rotate to. He sees the smokes. He might, he might have heard a footstep over towards Van. He saw smokes come in. Now he's running towards B. So he's got a great read on what Cloud9's doing. Oh, and Skadoodle can't land the shot on his Semphis. So again, he reigns on. And now it's going to be Sangst inside this site. And in behind the fountain, he manages to make it work. But it's Shroud who takes down nothing and no one else. It's another Cloud9 TK on Inferno as Hiko... He'll collect the last two, and it's now six to nothing, Niall, and perfect start. And Cloud Nines, their troubles on the T side seem to be haunting them from days gone by right now. Yeah, especially on Inferno. And on top of that, I mean, the read out of Hiko, whether it was because he's been on that team, he knows what's being called, or just because he heard something or had an instinct. Uh, great read from him in a tough situation, being a man down, rotating over towards B very early on. Him and Sanks just shut that down. Different setup again. Valens gets immediately inside Boiler. Shroud, though, using that angle. It's one of those ones that, like, it's such a freebie spot that it became so normalized that people stopped using it because everyone knew to expect it, and now it's almost become unexpected again because of that. Bit of irony in there, but it works out for him. And now it's going to be on to B, where Freakazoid and Skadoodle again are looking for the entry. Sanxt has fallen back, so because they've lost one player, they've left automatic to rotate early to A, and Hiko's going to be under a lot of pressure. If they decide to push in on him right now, they're a little bit hesitant. Again, Cloud9 not really taking much of a fight in this mid part of the round. Well, they've already they've already got the man advantage. They don't need to force anything here, so they're just going to see what they can work with. Semphis trying to equalize, but he gets punished by Skadoodle. Now it's Sank's turn to peek. He could spray it on two. They line up for him. He does grab Skadoodle, but now they're going to fall back in a four on three, and that actually sends automatic if you wanted to rotate over towards the B bomb site, but the hits at A, Sean Gares and Pitt takes out Sanks, and not much left here to do for Hiko and Automatic. And with the bomb down, they'll now put the smoke grenade out as well in front of Automatic's position at the library. So he'll not be able to push through. He'll try and push back down the other side. More likely he can get through that smoke. Less people waiting on the opposing side, but little does he realize Freakazoid's already inside Boiler. Nothing's already exiting because he's low HP, but he'd be able to swing back. Hiko, meanwhile, does find Sean Gares. He's going to push through and actually take down Shroud. And now if he can get to the bomb in time, he's actually got a kit. So this forces Freakazoid to have to stick around. Nothing's actually on the way back because he knows the situation could turn out poor as Automatic finds Freakazoid, but there's no time. And Automatic's going to lose his life as well to this bomb detonation with only 12 HP. So nothing. He'll be the only one to survive and Cloud9 pick up their first round. Yeah, but a costly first round to pick up. This is going to be a very, very light buy out of them. Man, could you imagine just situationally here that nothing goes away early because of the low HP? It was a four on two and then it ends up in a two on one with him as the last one left and he's too far away to stop the diffuser. Like, just imagine how poor that would be. That would almost put the icing on the cake for the start so far from Cloud9. Yeah, that would be, that would be absolutely brutal, but Smart guy, been around for a while, he's not going to quite give it up, but look at the utility on the Cloud9 side, it's so depleted, they have two smokes to work with here. One Molotov, Sephus peeking down mid with that AWP, and that's another thing we didn't know, Skadoodle doesn't have that off in his hand, Sanks is going to get blinded, he's in the closet, I don't think they know he's there, but they spot him now, and he's all alone. He's going to have a tough time getting out of this one, he's even going to be mollied out, now he's forced to do a wide peek, that's a third round in a row, Cloud9's got the entry kill. And with Pit down, it puts a lot of pressure on Valens, who actually makes it work with that flash. He gets out and back into coverage, but Sean slides out from apartments, gets the kill in the end regardless, and Sempus can't do much sitting against the wall. Outside the library, automatic though. Nice swing position from him as he comes in from top of middle. Completely catching off Shroud. Now Sean has to rotate back around. It is a two on two. They've got some position to work with, but Shroud has to win this kill against Hiko to make this all work. Automatics come deep inside the site, so Sean now has to play this in reverse. He does have position on this bomb, and he'll make it work. He makes the shot count, and it's two in a row, and that's important, because money bonus was reset. He even salvages the AWP for Skadoodle, and there's going to be one last buy on the side of Nylum to see if they can uh, keep this going. I mean, here's the thing. We talked about Cloud9, the struggles they have on Inferno. It's well known, even especially on T-side. I mean, it, you're... 
if you're going to get those entry kills three rounds in a row, Nihilum can't let them do that. I mean, that's just going to punish them eventually. I don't care how bad you are on a T-side of a map. At this level, if you're up five on four, it's just a massive advantage. And they have to go all the way back to the MP7 for Shroud. We'll see if Skadoodle can get rolling. He's trying to pick up toward mid right now, no surprise. As the rest of his team will try and use Freakazoid to get inside. That was desperate. Freakazoid actually looked like he was committed to go. He turned back as if there was going to be a flash coming over, but his two teammates, nothing, and Sean Gears were already falling off B. That could have been a massive miscommunication. Fortunately, he stopped up about three steps light of where Automatic would have been able to spot him. So complete Hall's control being able to get up to Cloud9 here. Nylum not contesting it at all this round. But Sanks and Valens do have a crossfire going on in mid. Sean gets spotted and they trade some damage. Sanks comes out on the bad end of it. And now Valens is all alone. He's got to swing out wide. He can't get the kill. Shroud's going to find him with an FB9. Shroud's nuts when it comes to finding angles like that. His reactions are just perfect. And that's what the MP7 is good for as well. Because now he can spray away, get that $600. He'll flash himself around the corner. Freak's going to be right behind him, so they'll let Shroud go. He's got low HP, and the AK will be able to bait out a shot. And when Sean goes down, it's actually Shroud that gets the recovery, and Freak finds Sank sliding out of the graveyard. Maybe he should have stayed there, because he's going to get put back after he goes to the morgue anyway. As the bomb does go down, automatic Hiko. They've got to come back over and make this work. And again, that smoke. That smoke is so strong post-plant in front of library. It does so much. That's a safe call, too, because they don't have the money behind this to even go for it, to even try and hope for some economic damage. Four rounds now in a row. Cloud9's find the first kill. I mean, they just... Nylum needs to... Cloud9's doing aggressively, getting up mid. It's been Shroud and Skadoodle at times, coming out Boiler, coming up mid to try and find a pick to gain that map control of brackets, and... I mean, they've got to set up a little bit of a defense there. That's a spot that they know Cloud9 is emphasizing early on. They can set up a nade stack. They can set up pop flashes. They can do a lot of things in the middle to kind of abate the pressure that Cloud9's putting onto them. The pressure's been pretty solid from Cloud9 as of late. Three in a row. This is a good answer. Remember, no pistol. This was a goose egg to start things off. And they're doing it the hard way. I don't know what the magic number is against a team like Nihilum, because... Their numbers are all over the place. Again, it's 70% was what we talked about. Again, on move-up teams, though, it puts a lot of pressure on their T side. It, they can really throw everything at you, really. Nihilum can. It's just a matter of what they show up with, with that night and how much space you give them to do it. So you'd have to think Cloud9 wants six rounds out of this T side. Yeah, I, I mean, mean uh, six, six want, would be they, great. They'd want 15 <laughs> yeah, this T side. You want as many as you can get. To be but, fair. Yeah, well, I mean, their, their struggles on this map haven't just been restricted to the offensive half. They've been on the CT side as well, so they're, they're literally just aiming for whatever they can get. There's no happy, happy number in their mind. They just want it all. And this is so actually a... So greedy. They just... <laughs> they, this is actually very interesting. Got a Hiko playing solo at the moment. He does have a smoke, but he hasn't laid it down yet, so it's giving Cloud9 this illusion that they can hit this bomb site. Now the smoke goes down. That'll delay him a little bit longer. Delays the name of the game right now. As Freakazoid comes down from Banana, he'll rejoin the raiding party. It's going to be him and Sean to try and find the angle as Valens realizes he has to fall back and cover off the apartments because they're sending Sempus over to B, and it's the exact wrong time to do that. This might give Cloud9 a huge advantage on the way through against this force spy as Valens only has the pistol as well, so it's only one gun on this A site. It's going to be Sanks, but he finds the first kill. He slides out, he finds two, and the bomb as well. Nothing finally responding, but look where Sempus is. Perfectly positioned inside the arch, and nothing will go not, no further. He shall not pass as Valens takes down Skadoodle, so he doesn't need, need, even need a rifle. And Shroud realizes that getting the bomb down is their best chance for economy, and Valens realizes that trying to go for a knife is potentially his best bet to build back into it. But it's Sempus to get the kill. <laughs> Valens realized at the last second with 5 HP he wasn't going to get there in time and just turns away. So trying to get a little bit cheeky. 7-3 to three now for Nile and they get back on the winner's board. And the economy, I mean despite that plant, Cloud9's economy through that 3 round winning streak wasn't, wasn't necessarily really strong so they don't have a whole lot to fall back on. They're going to need a plant here if they want to do one of their patented force buys. Semphis with the op this time on B with Hiko. So it's a Cloud9 B versus Cloud9. We'll see if Semphis can make it work. 
Seiko's cocked and primed, ready with the nade. As Sanks automatic, they're going to be stacked up on Arch side top middle. Sanks very aggressive, wants to go out on the back of this flash. But he won't spot anyone from Cloud9. They're all inside the connector at alt middle, with the exception of Skadoodle, who is peeking right side mid. Yeah, they're, I mean, this is a call that they, they're being very cautious. Four members over here, they're, they're trying to bust any kind of an aggressive strategy or setup that, that Nihilum has in the halls. So they've used some utility, they've mollied out the bedroom, and now they're going to take control of it. And this will be a delayed mid-take with the two to three members in mid. Smoke deployed, buying more time again. Sanks, he's the one inside the cubby, he's the one on that side that would be in the hot spot. Valens is going to fall off patio, it's going to be a full shuffle. In fact, they're bringing the op over, are they? They're actually going to stack B. It looked like they were going to swap Sanks and Sempus to try and get the op in position, but it was a little bit late to do so. So this is similar to last round, where Cloud9, due to timing, suddenly find themselves in the advantage on the take, but last time we saw what happened. It was a complete slaughter, and Valence has the advantage inside these smokes to do it again, but he can't connect the first number of shots. This means he has to drop and reload because he's only got 20 bullets in that magazine on the A1. Meanwhile, Sanks will find Freakazoid automatic on top of the hood of the truck, though. He'll find Sean Gears in the pit, walks around, Skadoodle, clueless, he's there. And he's the last one, so the defuse will come out, and Nihilum are making up for lost ground now. Yeah, but you, you gotta say, Nihilum's looking a little bit lost at times. They're very fortunate to come out with these last two rounds. Cloud9 being very, very silent into the later stages of the into their execution, and Nihilum, you know, thinking it's gonna be fall back into a B hit there, rotate one off. But... I mean, their two players played so well. Um, Valen's on the, on the balcony hiding behind smoke, not trying to overextend, just trying to find a kill, delay for time. He does it wonderfully, and now because of that bomb plant, this is going to be a force buy out of Cloud9. Two Tech 9s, they have a lot of utility behind it. Three AK-47s. But this is a big round where their economy could just be broken, and Sanks is going to open up things nicely on a Freak. Nothing is going to push through this Molotov. He's down very low. He gets traded off by Valen, so the two-man advantage for Nihilum early on. Looking good. Yeah, this is great. This is looking immediately great, because not only that, Cloud9 will be forced to save after this round. So it looks even better for the future as well, as Shroud does get Valens, but... Sean... catches automatic. And now Sean is B. I mean, that's this crazy. This is a ra race to B as well, because it was a race back between him and Sempus, who was already on Speedway, realized it. They got to the connection point at the same time, but it was smoked off, so it allows Sean to hold this position to allow Shroud and get the bomb in position. And then potentially hide for more position. It's all about position right now, Moses. I can see that. Well, here's the, here's the thing. I mean, this plan is, is huge now because Sanks is so incredibly low. This has become a very, very winnable situation for Cloud9. This nade might do it. It is down to a two-on-two -two now. And Semphis wants this entry from connection, or excuse me, from construction. As he does have the CZ-75 out, the problem is it's a perfect crossfire, but there's a little bit too much gap as Shroud doesn't cover off Sean Gears, and that means that Hiko can come around and get him. And that was not how that play was meant to transpire. That works out perfectly, but there's it. not enough time. There's not at all, and he realizes it, throws away the guns, just for the extra style points, but that means Cloud9 do pick up their fourth. And that round, I mean, we said it looked good there, and it looked good for the future. They were going to save if they lost that, and now Cloud9 are able to buy into this one as well. This is pulling them back to potentially getting a fifth that wouldn't have been there at all. Yeah, what a beautiful round from Cloud9. That was a three-on-five victory. Sean getting an entry over towards the B bomb site when Sephus had rotated off. Whoever was playing B, I mean, that, that that's a hard spot to uh, to put your teammates in with, with Sephus rotating off and to give up a kill like that. Because it, it, it was part of the way down banana. Sean hadn't been in the B bomb site yet, so Sephus had to come all the way back, but Sean beats him there and... Very, very unfortunate. Nice play in the mid-rounds from Cloud9 in this half. Villains is stacked with Sanks this time. Flash does go out. Gets them around the corner. Freak had his back to it, so he's the first one in position. Shroud's there as well. As is Skadoodle. Confined to just the rifle to work with. Not that he's still not a threat with it. But this is different this time, because Cloud9 are putting four players inside Banana. Now they're getting that same rotation we've seen Nihilum do in two separate instances. Interestingly enough, when they stack this three-player on B, they actually still have held A in both those cases. But now it's going to be the stack working in their favor. Freakazoid, though, he does his job. He finds the entry on Hiko, but not before Skadula went down. Nothing. Manages to turn back inside that smoke. He finds automatic. And now Cloud9 do have the advantage, so maybe they need to run into the advantage site for Nihilum. As Sempus waits inside construction, he finds Freakazoid, but Sean Garris, perfect lurk play, finds Valens rotating out of pit late. Leaves Sanks 
And Semphis now is the only one left as he comes in and desperately has to try and find Shroud as he peeks out on the right side, does it? But now he's still got to deal with Sean Gears out in Banana and he has to bait him out with this plant defuse. Sean might be too wise for this. In fact, he's guessing it. How perfect is that? If he'd held it, he would have been in a perfect position. But Sean, too smart for that. No Semphis inside out and backwards. <gasps> oh, and he almost so gives lucky. him the space to do it, but pops out perfectly time, takes him down. Talk about knowing your opponent. Yeah, Shaw just played Semphis there like a book, even despite Semphis having a strong half, 16 and 6. What a play, and this is going to hurt the economy for Nylon, but they're just trying to buy through these losses. I mean, look, they know they've, they've hurt the economy, they want to force Cloud9 onto a save for the last round, but... No kits whatsoever on the Nylon side, two pistols, a Mag-7, and then two Famuses. This is a very, very weak buy out of Nylon. Freakazoid takes Valence, Cloud9 again, early advantage, but not to be for long, because look at Sanks, he actually gets the double, as Semphis was the one I was making reference to, getting aggressive, it's Sanks that actually does better, takes down two, Shrouds gets the only response, and Cloud9, they might have got that fifth round, the sixth one seems a little bit harder to get, they do still have two AKs up against an MP7 and a 5.7, but both of those guns are more than worthy in certain situations and certain angles, specifically up close, if they can get them in those... Positions as he goes the only one with the rifle. Watch Semphis though coming back around. He actually catches them off. Nothing responding, but bomb down. Has to go back for that. Not too far away, but still puts him in a one on two. Shroud is even Shroud is even looking for that, and Semphis still beat him out on it. So then MP7 doing some work, and now nothing in a really really tough spot. I don't know if he was spotted there or not by Hiko. I think Hiko got back around the corner as he dropped into pit, but he, I mean, they have to know he's here. It's just a matter of timing at this point, because they know he was inside the apartments. Nothing, though, completely obliterates Hiko. And that's and opened everything for up. Automatic, exactly, it opens everything up. 24 seconds, he's got lots of time. Fortunately for Automatic, he's able to find an AK inside apartment, so he will have a gun to take this one-on-one. -on -one. But nothing runs all the way to B, and that was a smart play on his part. Oh, yeah. he plant this is construction plant, though, so this might telegraph where he's going to play. Actually, he's going to go right to quad. I mean, he's, it's a little bit of a mind game, perhaps, because, yeah, you're right, Automatic might search for something over at construction, but there's no kit. I mean, Automatic, he's walking at this right now. He doesn't have the time for it. He's got to go, and he's got to find nothing, because nothing doesn't even need to peek. He doesn't even need to know the information. And it's, I mean, the question is, why do you even walk at that point? Because it's going to be obvious that you're coming. It's more about when you get inside the site. Does put the smoke out. Nothing can't find it so far. Nothing can't find it so far. This is a full 10 second defuse and nothing thinks he's off it. Automatic is about to get a ninja. Or is the knife going to get him? He oh. does. un freaking believable that Automatic gets that lucky against a guy like Jordan Gilbert. Incredible play from Nihilum. A 10 second defuse inside the smoke. Nothing has got to feel absolutely terrible. And he just couldn't find it. Pulls his knife out just a little bit too late. What a play. From automatic. <laughs> oh my god. What a crucial round for that to occur on as well. That's gonna give Nylon as a great shot in this round. Now the eco the economy for Cloud9. It's a tough buy if for them here. If that was five seconds, I might have excused the fact that he sprayed immediately to his left and immediately to his right and not down the middle, but a full 10 second defuse is nuts. Well, nothing had to assume that he had a kit and he got off of it and was trying to wheel around the smoke, so he's being a little bit cautious, but just couldn't find it in the smoke, couldn't find the diffusers. That's so incredibly unfortunate. Man, oh man. And that would have put us on six rounds for Cloud9. Also would have put us in a really tight position for money on Nihilum's side, potentially get an 8-7 half and give Cloud9 everything they need and all the weapons... Motivation, momentum, pick the word, pick whatever itinerary you want to take the second half in control, but now they've got to struggle back into this. We'll see if they can at least close out the half, make up for that. Jordan's got to be shaking his head on that one. He's been around a long time. He'll be a little bit peeved oh, that... It's, it's just, it's unfortunate. He played it so perfectly, everything before it, exactly. that. Exactly. And he'll be peeved at himself for not winning that, that round, but he'll also understand that those things happen. He's the kind of guy that he'll stay composed and stay calm in it. But thanks, he's going to find Sean Garris. Freakazoid, though. Nate goes back out. Cancels it. Now they come around, and they've completely wrapped the site. They've got everyone down inside, and this gives them the chance to do exactly what they did in the last round. Three versus two post-plant. Automatic and Hiko. 
Got to go for a pretty solid retake. Now, there an, an, is not any smokes, excuse me, left right now for the terrorist side, so they won't be able to cover off the front of the library. That actually gives Hiko a bit of an advantage to get that peek. But he needs to be aware of the crossfire situation as Shroud is inside pit. And he might set a record for how many jumps are used in a single round as he tries to spot over top of the statue. Automatic's gonna slide beyond Hiko. He finds the first. It's Freakazoid down. Skadoodle responding, though, and Hiko on very low HP. He's going to drop. And Cloud9 make up for it. They'll make it 9-6, but it's what could have been after that one round. We'll see if they can hold on to this in the second half. I have crashed out. I have as well. We'll be right back. But, uh, I mean, just... To think about that half, I mean, what a comeback by by Cloud9 to get to get those six rounds. They were down 6-0, so for the second half, I mean, they really changed some, some things around in the mid-round. I, I believe in the first few rounds, I said Cloud9 looked a little bit spread out, a little bit disorganized in the mid-round situation. That was when they were down, and then all of a sudden, they go on a 6-3 run, and their mid-rounds were looking much, much better. So they figured some things out of Nihilum, and obviously, it could have just been better. Uh, unfortunate for nothing there, how many clips that's going to have made of it. That's gonna be nuts. That's... I, I... I... I don't think I've seen a 10 second diffuse like that in a very long time. Um, yeah... I, Five some... seconds, you see them every now and then, but 10 seconds in a situation where he's on top of the bomb and spamming like that. I, even just to catch a spray bullet in that... a stray bullet in that time. And you're dead right by calling that he thought he was off of it, because he switched to the Tech-9. If he thought he was still on it and knew it was 10 seconds, he would have taken time to reload. Instead, he gets off it, switches to the Tech-9, thinking, okay, he's gonna duel me right now, I have to be on the, on the lookout and be ready. And that's exactly what happened. And you have to think as well that Automatic's sitting inside the smoke going, holy shit, this isn't gonna work, this isn't gonna work, what's yeah, going on, what's like, going I on? Have, I have no chance, sorry guys, this is a bummer. He's probably laughing to kill himself by the time the round ended. So we, ha we haven't missed anything on our reconnect, as we can tell. They haven't readied up in the second half. Cloud9 get on the CT side. Now remember, they got six rounds, by the way. This is the impressive factor, despite that we're talking about a round that could have been theirs, and it could have been 8-7. They didn't get the pistol. If they got the pistol, they could actually 10-5 on the T side there, potentially, given everything that went against them. Very least, getting pistol, you're looking at a win. Maybe even 9-6 for them. Yeah, and also remember too, the first time we saw Nihilum on this map, I mean, granted, this was like the first or second week of the season, I believe it was like their first match. Um, Nihilum only got like two gun rounds on their terrorist side. They were very heavily reliant on the fact that they won the pistol around the two ensuing ecos. And their, their terrorist sides on this map, they were very basic at the time. It was Hiko and Cephas would clear out halls. And they'd have two members, Sanks and Automatic, clear out uh, Banana. They would gain control of that, and one player, Valens, just watching mid. So. It was nothing special that they were throwing at people, and even here, look at this, a heavy towards B, but only one player for Cloud9, that's Sean, he's just watching. He could get ran over very easily if he's not careful. And they are going to come toward him, and he gets that smoke out late, they know exactly where he is. They come around the corner, he gets at least into oranges too, gives himself a chance to get a direct peek, but... He would have had to hit the shot perfectly. He doesn't. Automatic catches him, and Hiko's going to wait on the lurk because he knows everyone's got to rotate out of A. They're all there. And he'll find two before Shroud answers. That means the bomb's already in position. So Nihilum looked poised to pick up their second pistol round. Yeah, he could not expect him that third flanker that, that destroyed him. And actually, this is an interesting decision. Skadoodle, he's going to save his smoke, and he's going to save this kit. That actually, yeah, that's actually pretty clever. Same with Shroud. Saving that armor hasn't been tagged yet, so that'll be an easy upgrade. So... They'll go forward into the second round with with a little bit of a uh, little bit of help. And this will do it. So Cloud Nine I have to do it even harder now. And it's this peculiar one. I mean, we're not done just yet, so we won't get too far ahead of ourselves. But Inferno is a map that, for a long time, Cloud9 constantly picked in best of threes because they considered it one of their best. You have to think that goes back to the complexity days when they upset very game 16-14 on it. And Sean might have put in his head at that time that, hey, we could, this is you know this was our first big European win. Maybe this is our best map. And it never really has played into their hands. It never really worked the way that they thought it would. And again tonight, although I have to say six gun rounds is pretty impressive, they are on the back foot on the map. Skadoodle's gonna slide out with the scout this time. Let's see if he can get a good half rolling for him because it's not like he was dead quiet. He's got six kills. He's second on the scoreboard due to bomb plants, but he never really got rolling like a guy you would expect. Uh, it's, his that, pedigree. It's, that, it's that T side with the op. It's exactly. Just so difficult, so. Specifically on this map as well. He's also he's been dropped this uh, the scout. Sean dropped him the uh, the scout, so Superman. he upgraded his armor so that you know he's not gonna have to deal with any kind of bullet punch. 
Or aim punch, excuse me. Very, very slow strategy from Nylon, being very cautious. They do not want to lose this round. They're going to use two players. Sephus and Valens are going to come up mid. They're going to molly off the uh, the closet. They just want to gain control of this. And now that they have it, I mean, this looks like they're going to be poised for a B split. Or they can just fall back towards B to help some teammates. And it looks like they want to go through the smoke anyway. Sank's the first one in. He finds Sean Gears. Now he just has to turn his attention to Freakazoid. And he does that as well. All the tasks covered by Sanks right now. Sempis, the only one to drop, but the bomb is going to get dropped. Automatic gets caught by nothing. He pushes through the smoke. It's amazing he does it that round and not the other, but either way, he does get the kill. Valen's responding in the shroud. Nothing, though. He's not done. This 5-7, he's making up for all the mistake he made in that one. Hiko's got to go for this plant. Tries to... Hugs the corner, manages to put it in position, spots nothing as he goes for the repeat and smartly takes down Skadoodle because oh, he knew Hiko. it had to be a trade, and that was brilliant from Hiko. Baits out Skadoodle, knew that they were going to be set up for that crossfire, and he turns back and takes down nothing as well. And a beautiful play to neutralize the work that nothing did throughout that round. Stop the bomb from being planted not once, but twice. Running down that clock, Hiko had to get it in the spin. That's why he's known as the best clutch in North America. Nicely done by Hiko, but a costly round there for, for, for Nihilum. That was an are you kidding me style moment. That was a very similar situation. And Sean wants to get aggressive, or does he? Has the nade cocked to at least do damage if they rush him? That's exactly the case, so the nade goes out, but it bounces a little bit high. It only does 5 damage to Sempus, and otherwise not a lot at all. And had massive potential and no delivery. Yeah, and this has pulled a lot of rotates as well. Skadoodle and nothing have come over, so there's 4 players leaning towards B from Cloud9. And all five members from Nihilum are in banana at the moment, just uh, just Hiko watching the flank. So they're going to try and wait this one out, try and get some rotations to go back towards that A site before they hit it. But it looks like nothing is just committed to this stack. Now push through, they get inside the site, but how far will they go? That's the question with this crossfire set up. Apparently they want to go all the way because Skadoodle's the only one to find a kill. And Sanks again, doubling on his entries. You made mention of it way back before this match was even underway, before the start of our first match, that Sanks and Automatic had to be the entry players for them. Well, Sanks is doing the task so far. Again, they're against pistols, but either way, that's four kills in the last two rounds on entry, and now it's left the shroud. We will get guns out in the next one, but Nihilum have themselves on 11, Cloud9 have to play or potentially what will be half the total distance here, as they'll double up and make it 12. And this is going to be a big round. This is, um, because of that second round by, I mean, this happens all the time. It's going to be a little bit of a, a lighter utility on the Cloud9 side. They might be missing some, uh, some kits. They might be missing some smokes. And on a map like this, where you want to smoke off those choke points, that could actually be huge. You can see now Freakazoid, nothing, Sean, Shroud, none of them have kits. Skadoodle with the only one. I mean, that's pretty desperate. And Skadoodle's going to be playing right now inside the A side. He is on Arch, so he'd be the quick rotate. No surprise, that's going to be his default. Sanks, though, again! This time it is against guns. He pops out and finds Sean easily. Freak responds into automatic, and Sanks is low, so the advantage might favor them, but not a balance hits Freak. He needs to be so careful not to get caught. He falls back 55 HP, and now he has to play passive with Skadoodle. So the kit's moved itself over to B. Nothing and Shroud remain on A, but Freak is what goes back out. It's a super aggressive double peak, but it pays off for Skadoodle. He makes up for it. And now they've got the man advantage. Meanwhile, Hiko lurking in apartments. No surprise there. He wants to take this fight against Shroud. A player he would have loved to have on his potential dream team. Now he has the... Lovely task of playing against him, and Skadoodle's not done. He finds Valence, trying to wrap around from construction as they push through the CT connector. Shroud, look at this! Ring around the Rosie. We saw him do that with Get Right to his... success at MLG on... MLG at Nuke, and he does it here against Hiko. Well done. The movement from Skadoodle, what a, what a play from Cloud9. I mean, it's unfortunate that that early trade that Sanks didn't have the money. He gets the opening kill, but, or not the money. He didn't have the health to trade that kill on Freakazoid once Freakazoid takes out automatic. But from there, the rotation's coming from Cloud9. Instead of just waiting in the bomb site, waiting to see what Nylum's going to do, you know, they take the initiative and they pop flash over and they do get some great trades in their favor, equalize the round and just win it from there. Nicely done from Cloud9. Sean Gears trying to spot through the edge of that smoke down toward where Valens is waiting at the bottom of middle. Smoke to douse the flames. It's deep smoke though, that actually has a massive gap. 
So there could be a potential advantage to Valens if anyone goes for a peek, but no one's looking like they're going to. Meanwhile, though, nothing. He's going to hold apartments perfectly. And per a great rotation from Shroud. Nothing's got them both, but even if he goes down, which he does now to Sanks, Shroud's already fallen off the front of the truck. Put Skadoodle in a secondary passive position, and they've covered that space, and now Skadoodle's going to catch off Valens, so they can't go for the wrap. They've got this played off well right now on cloud Nine side. Skadoodle finds it, and there it is. There's Shroud, waiting all the while to catch out Sanks. So, early job done by nothing, and then perfect support play from the other two players on the A site. Yeah, very, very, very well done. And now here's the danger. Nihilum, they're going to be forced under their first eco round. We mentioned this before before the match even started, or maybe it was before this half started, was the the, uh, the last Inferno match we saw Nihilum on. They only got two gun rounds. They're going to need much more than that here. If they want to take out Cloud9, they got off to a great start, but Cloud9's looking on fire. Now they're starting to heat up a little bit. Skidoodle hasn't picked up that op yet, but the bank behind this, uh, this win streak is going to start building. Smoke out. Freakazoid waiting to peek, trying to spot out when that flash, but he actually gets through the smoke and takes down Sempus. So the player he potentially replaced. Sean Gares, though, he'll double up. He'll find Sanks. Eco, Valen's automatic, they all fall just as fast as nothing gets one with an aid and Sean finds a hat trick. And Cloud9 are looking composed now that the guns are out. Yeah, and uh, no one no one dies there, so no need to bust out the op quite yet. Sean still has the Famas, he's playing a very economical game. But how is Nylum going to respond? They got the entry kill on their, on their first gun round uh, against Cloud9 over towards that B site, but it got equalized so quickly. It, not a whole lot to work with, only two smokes in their arsenal, three flash, or four flashbangs and some Molotovs, so... Oh, some nothing! He's blinded! Freakazoid was actually in front of them, they blocked each other, but they got away with it. That could have been massive if someone stepped out just one more step to the right, they could have had two C9 players dead to rights. Yeah, goes the other way, unfortunately, that's, uh, that's unfortunate for, uh, for Nihilum. I just saw it on the, uh, on the stream, that was, uh... Could have been a great opportunity for Nylum to open things up, but... Now they're going to be forced into this slow passive play. They have switched things up. Instead of Semphis and Hiko, it's Hiko and Valence taking over Hall's control, but nothing to find there. So where do they go from here? There's a great setup by Cloud9, Shroud and Nothing both playing in the lane. That's going to be able to shut everything down that comes out of Boiler up mid. And actually, even Skadoodle now joining him. So they have a three-player stack over towards the lane side. If Nylum comes up here, they're going to be in for a tough surprise. Molotov bounce. Shroud peeking, catching Valens. Rather holding the angle as it was Valens who slid out. Shroud though, he's got the spot to try and watch from Boilers. Does catch Hiko in transition, trying to come around the corner. Takes him down to 18 HP. Sangst is on two, and Automatic's burning down to 52 as we speak. But he pushes us through the fire, catches Sean's oranges one. Now they've got a sight, or do they? No, not at all. Freakazoid's still waiting at construction. He finds Automatic, and Sanks has to chase him to try and take this fight. Two HP and a bomb to plant. He gets off the bomb, and perhaps to the better of it, but not with Hiko coming in. He can't do anything more than die to Shroud. And it's double digits, both teams. Four straight rounds now for Cloud9, as the comeback is definitely mounting in their favor. And it's Nihilum's turn to find a gun round. Yeah, and not getting any plants either, so not doing themselves any favor in the way of their money. They don't even have the full mo uh, bonus quite yet. So we are going to see Light Armor and Tech Nines to support a full buy next round, but... They, they do, they, they absolutely need to find something. I mean, they're, they're losing. Once again, this is kind of what occurred to them in the first half. They're just not winning any of the early fights. They're not giving themselves any opportunities uh, to exploit here. Nothing falling back on a balcony. Shroud's actually going to... He's going to get aggressive. The flash did come around the corner. Skadoodle gets Sempest, but Shroud actually got overcommitted to that position. and couldn't get himself away because they rushed in in on numbers. And the strength prevails, but Skadoodle, he'll make up for it. He finds automatic, and it's all left down to Valens. The Tech-9 in hand. We'll see if it can do something absolutely incredible. <laughs> no, but it's... There's no, no, there's no chance for it to do something incredible. Something that Nylum uh, should think about doing. I mean, this is something that Cloud9 did in the first half. The way that they took they took control of brackets very early. They put pressure on it very, very quickly before the smoke got popped. So they forced the defense into a passive setup very early on. And that's kind of what allowed their executes to be so effective when they finally did come in. They were all, with all that map control, they're so close to the bomb site that once the smoke's plume, you're right there ready to go.
And Nylum, I mean, they're just playing very, very passively early on, waiting for the smokes to plume, waiting for them to fade away. So if they can get aggressive and find some map control early, uh, they could take that places. Well, let's see if they can take this to 12-12 in Cloud9's favor. Although that would be a tie. It sounds weird to say Cloud9's favor, but it would definitely favor them as momentum is firmly in their position right now. Really aggressive stuff right now. From Fikazoid, he's found himself down at bench. Nothing got out to support that play. Skadoodles also, this is a stack fully on A right now. Is Sean the only one on B? And the reason they do that is because if Sean can slow them down at all inside Banana, they're so far down mid that Fikazoid would go for an immediate flank. The problem is, even if that's the case, they still have Sanks and Hiko over on the alt mid, which would counter flank the flank in a weird way. Counter flank the flank. Fikazoid is in such a weird spot. He gets caught out. Sanks. Punishes him, he gets put into an awkward position. That was a very, that was a fumbled aggressive, aggressive tactic by Cloud9 there. He almost seemed like surprised, he got down there and he couldn't find anything. Well, nothing's still searching for something. And Skadoodle, he's gonna play right inside the fountain. That's one way not to get lit on fire, as he stays inside the water and he'll make good of this position on three straight kills automatic. He goes down, as does Sanks on the secondary entry. He goes now finding himself with only Valence to work with. They do have the bomb still up, but they've got to take down two players. He does massive damage to Sean, down to 5 HP. All he has to do is bide his time. That nade, though, he pops out perfectly, does catch Hiko. Valence gets him in response, and Shroud on the rotation through the smoke. He makes good on the attempt, so it is going to be a tie game. Cloud9, six straight rounds unanswered. And Nihilum have yet to find a gun round on this T side. It's getting a little bit desperate for them at this point. Yeah, Skadoodle putting his mark onto this match and doing it without the AWP. Finally, he picks it up here after that round. And, and this could be scary because this uh, Nihilum, they haven't seen it yet. And they know it's probably coming at some point, but the timing of it might just catch him off guard. And Cloud9 was able to come back from 6-0 down for from 6 straight from Nihilum. Can Nihilum do the same to Cloud9? And Skadoodle's got great positioning now, looking down towards the terrorist ramp. But it's on a timer. He falls away when he knows they could be coming away from alt mid. Skadoodle waits on the angle with the op. Hopes desperately that Sempus commits to this peak. He's gonna wait a little longer. A little more. Fires there. Pre-fire from Sempus though. Now he'll fall off it because he doesn't want to take one chance shot. No point giving himself up early. Giving the early pick to the T side. Splitting up the defense. So nothing's there to flash him out. Skadoodle doesn't peek on that flashbang though. He's actually playing the patient game right now. That's one thing with Skadoodle, he is a very patient opera, and in fact, some of the updates, although he came in just after the update and started playing again, it definitely could have favored his play style. Here, here's what really scares me in this round so far, is with that AWP especially, Nihilum only has two flashes and one smoke to work with, so no matter where they go, they're going to be at a massive disadvantage. Another smoke just plumes over at the B-bomb site in about 36 seconds, so it's going to run down below 20 before Nihilum can even really think about hitting this. They might just have to actually go through the smoke. Now it's Sanks that wants to try as he comes, but look at Skadoodle's position, but he pulls off, he goes immediately to the flash at exactly the wrong time, so twice the timing hasn't gone the way of Skadoodle. Now they're going to rush in on top of this B site, Hiko gets blinded up though, that leaves Automatic desperately alone inside the site, Hiko needs to get back in, he's got Sempus to work with him, but Sean Gares and Freak is already found the other two, it's only Hiko that remains, but he doubles up, he does get back into Sean, but time's expired, they can't get the bomb down. And Cloud9 now pick up 7 straight. It's going to be 13-12 and Hiko Sanks. They'll get no money out of this. Fortunately, they will save the AKs. Question is, do they force on this or not? It looks like right now... Okay, yep. Yeah, no, Tech 9s. I, I mean, that's all the, the job of those smokes. Just running the clocks down. That's a lack of aggression by Nihilum early on. So Cloud9's able to keep their smokes and their flashes and their Molotovs in their hands as long as they want. And because of that, they can run the clock down until 19 seconds before that hit comes in. Nicely done by Cloud9 in the second half. We'll see if they can continue on with this momentum. Sean Gears, he's gonna get aggressive. They put the deep smoke, so now they can get Sean down, pull Freakazoid off, and they do it. They're already executing it. Freakazoid's already rotating through. So Sean, he either gets a kill or dies early, calls for the rotation back, and they get able to stack up the A site as a result, but they may not even need to. Shroud's already got Valens, nothing. He doubles up with Hiko and Sanks, and now Sempus, he catches him off. But look at Sean, he goes right through the smoke, he's gonna push, they're gonna pinch the offense, they're gonna give them absolutely nothing to work with, this Semphis and Automatic. 
Very little room to work. Sempus does have the op. He's trying to spot anyone inside the site. They're giving him a bit of space to walk around the corner, but I'm not sure how much advantage he'll find from this, although he does spot up Stroud. Can't connect the shot. Goes back to the Tech-9 to bail himself out. But again, Sean, so patient, is going to wait. Automatic does check the first corner, but no time to turn back and react to the fact that Sean's already firing away. And Sempus has a tough decision. Save the op. Or give it up and give Cloud9 14 rounds with an eco to potentially put them on match point. Uh, th this is this is the big thing. I mean, outside of outside of uh, the first round, there hasn't been any bomb plants. I mean, they've had the time expired in the last round, but in this win streak from Cloud9, no bomb plants. So Nylum not able to get any great buys out of this losing streak. Even with the money bonus, they're still hurting on nades. They're still hurting on on smokes. And I mean, one more thing that just tells you is that this defense from Cloud9 is not giving up anything. They're just shutting down Nylum. Well, they've shut him down now eight in a row. And with swift style, that has to be said. That's going to be Galil's for Valens and Hiko. They want to get up and get an established presence in Banana this time, or at least it appeared they did. They slow it up just a little bit more. They hesitate on it. That smoke doesn't go as far this time, though, for Sean. That nade does, though. Automatic sees it coming. Push himself back inside the cubby and get away from the damage. And it's going to be a passive setup, so they completely change it over again. Throw a curveball from Cloud9's perspective, back to formality. They'll put Freakazoid on the crossfire from CT. Nothing's already coming over. So I don't know what read they had on that, other than that there was a bit of spam and a few nades thrown to stack this up early, but Cloud9's already rotated one off A. And interestingly enough, there's four Nylon players, almost five if you include Semphis, who's now coming back inside Banana. Yeah, no real map control outside of Banana, but they throw those initial smokes to get the response out of Cloud9. Now they're going to re-execute and come right through. Not gonna turn to- there's a wall of smokes, Freakasoid does find one, Sean even jumps into water, grabs one before being traded off, but so much more to do for Nylon to get into this bomb site. Two on three situation now, and Freakasoid's just hiding in the site behind the smokes. Bomb got tossed a long way away from the body when it got dropped as well, so it's all the way over towards CT. But the wall of smokes works, but you need to make sure you have one player that gets through it to secure and allow the bomb plant to come in, so they never had that positional control. Sanks now again, all alone, caught by Skadoodle. You can't slow peek a guy like that with an AK against an op. And now it's match point for Cloud9. Remember, if Nylum had won this, they would have been tied up at 8-2. and two A piece. And instead, it's looking like it's going to be 7-3 and three for Nylum and 9-1 and one for Cloud9. 9-1, and one, Cloud9. How appropriate. <laughs> Cloud9 on 9. Yeah, even even another round, zero, uh, zero bomb plants after round one still, so... I mean, this is just... That's why you're seeing these Tech Nines on Valens and Semphis. This is just brutal for Nylum. Uh, the other thing, too, is Sanks. I talked him up in those two anti-ecos about his entries, and then he actually got one on the first gun. He's gone quiet since then. He still leads the way on 28 of everyone in the server. That's the other interesting thing right now. Nylum are behind, but two players are outfragging anyone on Cloud9. Sempus on 23, Sankst on 28. It's Valens, Automatic, and Hiko that actually lag behind everybody out because Cloud9 has dead even frag distribution. 17, 19, 18 between five players. And Sean Gares, he's going to put himself onto the 19 as he takes down Automatic. So Sanks is doing massive work. It yeah, needs to be more is. of a team contribution. Well, the, the problem is, you said it, just kind of got quiet on the entries. So, I mean, Cloud9, this defense has shut everything down. And if you're getting successful entries, chances are you're going to be getting bomb plants in at least a couple rounds. And here they are sitting with zero. Valens around the corner, nothing, no finding Sanks already. It's Tech 9 desperate to make something happen, and it has to be even more desperate now because he's gonna suddenly realize his two teammates that preceded him were already gone, and nothing. That M4 is looking sharp, but it's all left to Semphis. He does at least take down Sean, so he gets back, and actually he gets nothing, so revenge is a best. This best goes cold, he does so in twice, and now it's gonna come back to him as he picks up the bomb inside the arc. Has to seconds. come back over. Yeah, that's the big thing. You're dead right. 15 seconds, 10, 11, and a one on two in the match point situation. Semphis, this would be heroic. And he does at least spot up where Shroud was playing, but he gets dropped just as quickly. And Cloud9 resume the lead of the uh, so far division. 9 1 so far in the season. Great start from that. Yeah, what 